It's hard to imagine life without our gadgets these days. And while smartphones have taken over the world as perhaps the number one tool that we all need and own, it's fair to say that it's also far from the only gadget that we carry around every day. From earbuds to laptops and even the relatively new gaming handheld segment, we've got plenty of different gadgets all around us. As such, we'll be taking a look at some of the best laptops, both premium and more value-focused ones, smartwatches, headphones, and even gaming devices that 2023 has had to offer. If I had about 10,999 ringgit laying around and all I wanted in this world was the best laptop money can buy, it's hard to look past the ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. Despite looking like your average everyday laptop and weighing it at just 1.6 kgs, the ZenBook Pro 14 OLED is actually one of the most powerful content creator laptops you can get. You'll find a 14.5 inch touchscreen OLED display with a 2880 by 1800p resolution, pushing a 120Hz refresh rate, peak brightness of 550 nits, full coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut, and a layer of Corning Gorilla Glass NBT over it for scratch resistance too. Under the hood though is where all the true power lies, with a 13th gen Intel Core i9-13900H, 32GB of RAM, a terabyte of SSD storage, and an NVIDIA RTX 4070 as well, making it not just capable for heavy content creation, but also the occasional game or two. There's a 76 watt hour battery as well as plenty of I.O. Seeing as it checks out everything you could want in a premium laptop, portability, performance, practicality, it's almost a no-brainer then that we awarded the best laptop of the year to the ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 OLED. We had the Acer Swift X14 come into our office for review earlier this year, and by the end of it, I very nearly ordered one for myself. That's how much I love the Swift X14, as while it retained a lot of what made the original Swift X from two years ago good, it also came with a major upgrade that just made the whole package that much better. It's really the display here that is a tweet which made the Swift X14 a much more capable laptop. The Swift X14 now comes with a 14.5 inch 2880 by 1800 OLED display, a big jump from the lackluster IPS panel on its predecessor. And while this meant a price increase, you'll still find plenty to love here with up to an Intel Core i7 13700H up to 32 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD, as well as up to an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 and a 76 watt hour battery, giving you all the horsepower you need in a chassis that's just 1.55 kgs heavy. While perhaps not the best laptop overall, the Swift X14 still does enough to command the second place finish for laptop of the year. Apple's laptops are undoubtedly some of the most well known out there be it for students, content creators, or anyone seeking a really well-built machine. The MacBook Air in particular is a popular choice, being significantly cheaper than the MacBook Pro, yet still offering a lot of that Apple goodness. If you're someone who wants a larger screen than the 13-inch one though on the regular MacBook Air, Apple has you covered with this year's larger MacBook Air 15. The MacBook Air 15's biggest upgrade is of course the larger 15.3-inch liquid retina display, with a 2880 by 1864p resolution. It still offers a peak brightness of 500 nits and covers the DCI-P3 color gamut too. Powering it is an Apple M2, a chip that might not be Apple's latest and greatest anymore, but still a very much capable piece of silicon. And with its four speaker setup, MagSafe charging, twin Thunderbolt 4 ports, and perhaps the best battery life on any 15 inch laptop out there, the MacBook Air 15 takes its place as our bronze winner for Laptop of the Year. Acer is perhaps no surprise here as a frontrunner in the best bang for buck laptop category, as the Taiwanese giant is known for their laptops that offer a lot for your money. This year, when considering the best value laptop of 2023, it's hard to look past the Acer Swift Go 14, a laptop that, having reviewed it for ourselves, we found to be an exceptional device for everyday casual users who want nothing more than a simple, no-nonsense laptop. Officially starting at 3199 but 
Available for much less than that on places like Shopee during sales periods, the Acer Swift Go 14 offers a sleek aluminum chassis with a 14-inch Full HD IPS display and plenty of necessary I.O. too. We also personally recommend the configuration with an AMD Ryzen 5 7530U, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. Though a more powerful Ryzen 7 7730U option is available too. Rounding it off is a 50 watt hour battery that was mostly fine keeping it chugging along for roughly 5 and a bit more hours. The VivoBook 15X from ASUS does a lot of the simple things right, while keeping the price relatively low too, starting at just 3,099 ringgit. You'll find a sleek looking metal lid with a large 15.6 inch Full HD IPS display that can open fully flat, and under the hood is your choice of an Intel Core i5-1335U or the Ryzen 7 7730U with 8GB of RAM and up to a terabyte of storage. Just like our other entries on this podium, the VivoBook 15X comes with a healthy amount of I.O. for a laptop too. Another podium spot for Acer here, thanks to the Acer Aspire V014. Just like the Swift Go 14 from before, the Aspire V014 was one that we considered one of the best laptops to get priced under 3000 as it officially starts at just 2599 Despite that, you can still kill it up with up to an Intel Core i7-1355U, up to 16GB of RAM, and a 512GB SSD. And as always, you also have plenty of I.O. and a 50 watt hour battery keeping the lights on. As for a display, there's a 14-inch Full HD IPS display, similar to the one to the aforementioned Swift Go 14. But what really sets the Aspire Zero 14 apart from the rest though is that it's positioned as an environmentally friendly laptop. Built out of 40% post-consumer recycled plastic in its chassis, Acer says that it has reduced up to 30% of carbon dioxide emissions when manufacturing the Acer Zero 14's chassis. On top of that, the trackpad is made of recycled ocean-bound plastic, while the entire laptop comes in a paint-free design. You'll even find that it comes in packaging made of recycled paper and cardboard which you can reuse by folding it into an ergonomic laptop stand. The ASUS ROG Ally was barely considered a real product when it debuted on April Fool's Day earlier this year. But after ASUS finally showed it off, it quickly became one of the biggest new gaming devices out there. While the Valve Steam Deck had existed before, no one had really perfected the whole Windows-powered gaming handheld before. That is, until the ROG Ally came along. The ROG Ally has plenty of things going for it with a 7-inch Full HD IPS display capable of a 120Hz refresh rate, the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, and a relatively lightweight build with all the necessary buttons similar to your standard Xbox controller. But really, it's the versatility of Windows that makes it stand out compared to the Steam Deck. As because it runs Windows, it can run pretty much anything your standard gaming PC would too, with only the mediocre battery life being the main issue. And if you want, you can even make it become your gaming PC altogether, with optional accessories like a dock and eGPU for your ROG Ally. Complete with a relatively affordable 3299 price tag as well, the ROG Ally is very much our deserving winner of Best Gaming Device of the Year. When the Odyssey OLED G9 first debuted, Samsung claimed that this massive 49-inch monitor was the world's first DQHD OLED monitor. It features a display ratio of 32 by 9 with a resolution of 5120x1440p, essentially making it more like having two 1440p monitors side by side, except with the Odyssey OLED G9, there's no bezels between them. The Odyssey OLED G9 will find itself well suited to any gamer with deep wallets here, as on top of its size, it can push a refresh rate of up to 240Hz and has plenty of other nice features as well. On the back meanwhile, you'll not only find plenty of I.O., but also all the necessary RGB light. You can even find the Odyssey OLED G9 with Tizen installed, giving it smart TV-like functionality to stream stuff off it like Netflix and YouTube. The Lenovo Legion Go is yet another handheld gaming device that debuted a while after the ROG Ally. And while it is a fair bit more expensive than the ASUS machine despite using the same AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, 
The Legion Gold does have a couple of tricks of its own. For starters, it has a larger 8.8 inch Quad HD Plus IPS display, pushing a 144Hz refresh rate and a larger 49.2 Watt hour battery as well. On top of that, the controllers themselves each have a 900mAh battery, and that's because you can detach the controllers from the main display, making it almost like a Nintendo Switch, giving it more versatility in how you want to set up the Legion Go. You can even use the right controller in FPS games by attaching it to a magnetic dock. Oh, and the joysticks, they use Hall Effect sensors too. For the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic to be considered the best smartwatch of the year, you had to bring some pretty major upgrades or the rather lackluster Galaxy Watch 5. Samsung did just that by introducing a feature it omitted from its predecessor, bringing back the signature rotating bezel on the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, making navigating through the Wear OS UI much easier and intuitive. Other notable upgrades with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic is a brighter sapphire crystal display capable of hitting 2000 nits, while powering the wearable is a new Exynos W930 chip that's 18% more capable than before. Battery life has improved too, with the smartwatch capable of lasting for up to 40 hours of use, with a quick 30 minute charge able to get it back to 45% to get. With the Apple Watch Series 9, it mostly ended up in second place due to it not having enough significant changes over its predecessor on top of it being mostly only for those who use an iPhone. That doesn't actually mean it's a bad device. If you're looking for your first ever smartwatch and you're firmly in the Apple ecosystem, the Apple Watch Series 9 will undoubtedly be a great wearable, which is why it still comes in at second place on this podium. Not only does Apple claim that the Watch Series 9 is now more environmentally friendly, being the first Apple product that they say is carbon neutral, it also comes with a new double tap the gesture control using just your index finger and thumb. This lets you control the smartwatch without needing to physically touch the screen itself, allowing for one-handed use. And speaking of the display, it's still the same size as before but can reach a higher 2000 nits peak brightness. All of this is powered by a new Apple S9 chip, giving it up to 18 hours of battery life. While the Huawei Watch GT4 may have only placed third in this category, it's arguably one of the more stylish smartwatches out there too. Thanks in part to the four strap options you get which include a metallic bracelet, cloth strap, lever and rubber straps too. The smartwatch itself comes in two sizes, with a larger 46mm Watch GT4 having an octagonal chassis built out of stainless steel, with the smaller 41mm Watch GT4 being circular in shape. Both of them do have the same 466x466p resolution though. The smaller Watch GT4 also has a 7-day battery life, with the larger one able to survive up to 14 days of use. The Watch GT4 has plenty of health features as well to track your heart rate, blood oxygen levels, sleep stress levels, and women can use the menstrual tracker as well. There's GPS and navigation support on top of over 100 activity modes and speakers to play music directly off your Watch GT4. There's a reason why the Sony 1000XM series are some of the most popular earbuds out there. They may not be the best sonically, but when it comes to active noise cancellation, the new Sony WF-1000XM5 is perhaps among the best noise cancelling earbuds out there. This year's true wireless earbuds come with improved ANC, richer vocals and lower distortion thanks to the new V2 integrated processor and an updated QN2E noise cancelling processor powering the 8.4mm Dynamic Driver X driver units in each earbud. The buds themselves are 25% smaller, have an IPX4 water resistance rating, and can last for up to 8 hours of music with ANC on, and up to 12 hours with ANC off. That's on top of the charging case itself, providing an additional 24 hours of use, and you can charge it via USB-C or wirelessly as well. Technics, the legendary brand from Japan, debuted their new EAH-AZ80 True Wireless In-Ear Headphones earlier this year. 
pitting it right against fellow Japanese manufacturer Sony and the aforementioned WF-1000XM5. While they're a little bit pricier than the XM5s, the AZ80 does have a slim advantage over the Sony earbuds in driver size, with the Technics boasting a larger 10mm driver. Sharil, who reviewed the AZ80s, also found that the build quality of them was fairly impressive, with a metal finish on the case and a rather unique design to the earbuds themselves. Other premium features here include Bluetooth 5.3, ANC, and support for LDAC and AAC. However, where it does fall short against the XM5s though, is in the battery department, with just over 6 hours of use according to Sharon. The Nothing Ear 2s is perhaps one of the better true wireless earbuds that you can get for under 600 brand new. Despite it sharing a very similar design to the Nothing Ear 1s from before, the transparent design still appeals to plenty of people including ourselves here at Sarajin Chow, and it's a nice change in flavor to the plethora of other earbuds that took on the design language of the Apple AirPods instead. You will find 11.6mm drivers in each earbuds, 6 hours of battery life without ANC, and up to 36 hours of use when you factor in the charging case, which has wireless charging too. Other nice-to-haves here include multi-device connectivity, improved IP54 dust and water resistance rating, and it's lighter than the ear ones as well. Anyway, that's it from us here at Soya Chincha for the best laptops and gadgets for this year. Let us know in the comments below what you think of our winners. Did we miss any you know, that you think deserve the mention as well? And remember to subscribe for more from us here at Soya Chincha. This has been Raymond, signing out.